Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to an episode of InRange. We've got a really interesting firearm today. This is going to be a short video, but it's awesome. This is the original 1918 BAR, which was not ruined by the Ordnance Corps yet. It doesn't have a horrible bipod. It actually is semi and full auto, not that weird slow and fast. The furniture has been replaced, but the gun's original. It actually has usable iron sights that are aperture sights, which actually you can aim with, unlike the A2 BAR, as well as couple other interesting features. The finish is blue and beautiful, but I also want to talk a little bit about the safety. So right here we're on safe. All the way forward is semi-auto. In the middle is fully automatic, but there's a button here that you have to depress to put it back on safe. Because if you were on semi and wanted to switch it to full, you didn't want to accidentally go to semi. So if I depress the button and push it back, now we're safe. This is an open bolt gun. I'm going to go ahead and make, yeah, the bolt is open. Put the charging handle forward. I'm going to load the first mag. I'm going to fire this from the shoulder in full auto. Yeah, notice that it also does not have the magazine guides that the A2 did. It does not, but here we go. That's semi. Now full. Quite controllable, in fact. I'm really surprised by how easy that is control. And this is even lighter than the A2. Yeah, honestly, it handles better. They really ruined the gun with the A2. Let me hand this over to Ian for a couple more live fire demonstrations and a little more discussion. Hey, Ray. All right. I have fired actually a number of different variations of the BAR, but I've never actually gotten a chance to shoot a proper original in 1918. So I don't like the fact that it doesn't have a pistol grip. Um, but beyond that, this is a pretty slick gun. As Carl was talking about, the sight is basically off of a Winchester or a, a pattern 14 Enfield or M1917 Enfield. It's a nice big aperture that should be pretty easy to use. So, full auto, bolts open. That's not too bad. That's actually, uh, I've certainly fired worse. The weight helps, of course. It's, I think, about 16 pounds uh, in this configuration. And it jumps around. It's a big cartridge. Um, but ooh la la, it is nice. Now, Carl has the cool World War I accessory that uh, I don't think they used for very long, but it's a neat idea. And uh, Carl, why don't you show us how it's used? All right, so you just saw a demonstration of walking fire. Generally speaking, the doctrine was in semi-automatic. You're supposed to fire every time you hit your left foot. I did it on both my feet, but regardless, that's what it looked like. But what we have is a specialized belt with this very interesting cup in it. And this goes into the cup. It helps you stabilize and align the gun. I don't even need to use my hand for it. So I have one hand on the trigger, one hand on the wooden brace. And at this point, this is how I would do my walking fire. Now, now, I, don't, I don't know that they ever really actually used that, but that was the idea in World War One. Right. So now I put it to full auto, which is not really doctrine. I'm going to go ahead and do a little full auto dump from this belt clip just to give you an idea. Are we ready? <laughs> that actually pushed me back. Kind of like when you think about it. You've actually heard of jet fighters firing their guns or even aircraft firing their guns and losing a little bit of acceleration. That actually pushed me back. There was enough recoil in this cup. To push me back but i was able to keep it kind of where i wanted it to be well you can't lean into it when it's on your belt you can't lean into it but it does help you align it it is another point of contact and while i think in theory i can see why people thought this was a good idea in reality probably not and i bet you a couple guys that tried it in the field if they did abandoned that concept pretty quick and that's why walking fire kind of went away but guys that's a really interesting thing and hopefully you enjoyed being able to see an actual 1918 bar not only being fired, but used in semi-auto as well as in that walking fire guys and full auto as well. And this is one of those sad situations in which the gun came out as Browning designed it, a good gun. They kind of went wrong with it with the A2, and it's really a neat opportunity to be able to see this A2, or excuse me, the original 1918 BAR in its un, undamaged guys. Thanks for watching.